Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number four of our official series where we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server, some of my commentary. As always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. This weekend, we're gonna actually have some really cool things. So stick around, uh, definitely on Saturdays, pretty cool. But today we're starting out on Friday on Adam LZ secret spot. I think we've all seen this track a couple of times. Uh, really, like I've mentioned before, really good for warming up. Uh, a little bit more technical maybe than would be great. Uh, but it's good for me. It does seem like I, I've thought about it a little bit more. This track does have some weird uh, grip or like, I guess like what I would say is what it feels like, honestly, is basically some dusty road out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, you don't really have the grip that you'd expect on most tracks. But at the same time, you know, it is Adam LZ's secret spot. That is basically what it's supposed to be. So it totally makes sense. Um, I said I would watch a video of this in the track. I totally forgot to, so that's my bad. But here I'm just trying to stay with Foul, watching for his lines, trying to see what he's doing, trying to warm up myself too. Today I locked into the uh, purple S15, so just trying to fill it out, see if I'm rusty or not from uh, not drifting during the week. But here we're actually going to be transitioning to another chase with foul i think really i just wanted to showcase a little bit more of these runs especially for tracks that are not really driven all so often i believe i mentioned it before this track is really a fast track even though it's smaller so you got to really be cognizant of your transition timing here transitioning a little bit on time you can see i'm a little bit shaky i think there's just a little bit of hesitation just because i wasn't 100 percent percent sure of his lines but overall like he's a very consistent driver so this is a great warm-up for me honestly it was actually really helpful but just trying to stay close to his door not doing anything too crazy probably a little bit more proximity than i need to but the new fov change actually made a pretty big difference i think so i feel a lot more confident being closer but yeah this is this is more of just like something i like to showcase especially like my first couple runs for these videos just so you guys can kind of see the difference maybe there's not a ton of difference but for me definitely watching some of this back i could tell you can you can see me just trying to really hold that proximity and really like i've mentioned in our past couple videos focusing a lot on my transition timing there you can see i did a little bit early made a mistake luckily no one was behind me so no harm no foul uh no pun intended but we're now switching to mihan this track actually continues to grow on me quite a bit it this actually was crazy in editing there was so many good runs here i, I just wish that i could include them all but as you could probably see the video is already pretty long here but again trying to be consistent with the transition timing really focusing on fouls lines i think our last video i mentioned especially watching it back i felt like i was really behind in all these transition timings and especially when you have people behind you, it, it messes everything up. So my goal here is to keep the proximity transition when he transitions. And then also I've been working a little bit harder on trying to maintain the entry proximity. So I've always been a little bit nervous, not maybe, uh, maybe not super confident in my skills. So I always give a decent amount of proximity on entry, but trying to match the same spot that he's initiating on and then holding it through. This is a great track actually to practice that too, especially because you have a big sweeper that you run into. Here we're actually, looks like what, six deep on a train. So now the pressure's up a little bit higher, losing a little bit of proximity here, not gripping super hard, transitioning okay, maybe a little bit late on the wall. And then you can see, especially on the track cam there, running that outside line, it really sets you up pretty well uh, for these other lines. So I'd say maybe the next corner and then really like the corner that you take sets you up for the next corner, et cetera, et cetera. So really understanding where you need to be in the track is pretty important. But here again, I'm just trying to maintain that proximity. You can hear me kicking the clutch quite a bit. And we're actually going to get into a little bit of that conversation later in this video, actually on Saturday, I'll, I'll kind of explain it a little bit more, but 
Again, a little bit late on the transition. I thought that dude was going to get smoked, but looks like he reset perfect. And the guy behind me is just right on my door. I wish I knew who that was. It's, I feel like I want to say it's uh, OTM reg, but I, I'm actually not sure. But yeah, here losing a little bit of procs. And you can kind of see, like, especially this track, when you're off on your transition timing, everything else kind of falls apart. I make a pretty decent mistake that ends up reverberating down the train too. And here again, I'm just trying to stay with them, losing a little bit of proximity. And I think some of that too, if you could hear, I'm basically hitting my limiter, which really isn't giving my car room to stretch. So kind of why I'm actually losing some of that proximity. But now we actually switched to Hush Compound. Now I really do forget if we've seen this track before. I think I left a little bit longer segments into this just so you guys can see it. A very unique looking track. When I also have uh, OTM robot in front of me, trying to be really consistent and on its door as best I can. Any of the OTM boys trying to just match their angle. Definitely not trying to get uh, basically smoked on proximity, but here just trying to stay consistent on that prox, especially where, you know, having the same car, maybe a little bit of different tunes, but just trying to stay on his door. And then here, uh, I want to talk about the lines that you probably see, but maybe if, if you haven't really thought about, just kind of get some of my perspective on here. So right at this point, we're going to now be at the beginning, right? To our right is where you actually enter. So here, I typically go for this outside line, pretty much exactly what Robot's doing. So going near the concrete pillars or uh, barricades, running this outside, you're going to have to shallow up a little bit. Now, I've seen some people right there on that corner go really deep, but you can kind of see it set it up weird for that next corner. So I think you want to go outside and then maybe cut in a little inside slash midline. Losing a lot of proximity here because I was taking my own line versus following his line. Then here going outside, which is great. And then this section is kind of interesting. There's a little bit of an uphill and then I think it's just like a very gradual slope. So it's very easy, as you could see, I pulled right into his door to lose that speed or that momentum that you have. So you really have to think about the line, not only as you as a driver uh, or drifting rather, but you also have to think about the people behind you if you're gonna be slowing up too much. But I thought it'd be cool to just show a little bit more of a long form of this track so you can kind of hear some of my thoughts. So now we are on a fourth position chase. We have turbo, foul, and I wish I could read his name, but I swear I probably need to just get some glasses. It's just really small. Okay. It's just really small, but here taking a pretty good line actually right there. Like I said, you can keep that momentum. If you go that mid slash inside line, trying to stay close on proximity. I don't think I've really driven with the person in the lead there before. So I'm not really sure what lines it's going to take. You're going to see how shallow I was there. Just trying to maintain proximity. Now, because I don't have any red arrows behind me, uh, or if you look at the track map, I don't have any cars behind me. I typically will sacrifice some of that chase ability for just proximity. Obviously, if I could just keep the constant or consistent proximity, that wouldn't be an issue. But just kind of wanted to showcase that a little bit there too. You can see Turbo straight banging on the lead door late on my transition here, which is going to hurt me. Again, this is a very fast section and go a little bit outside, then way outside. And look at how much gap was generated by that one mistake. It's really interesting, these type of tracks. I mean, there's a couple out there. When you make those one mistakes, especially if it leads into like a very uh, fast pace corner. I don't want to say a straight because that's definitely not really a straight, but like more of a shallow angle. Once you make that mistake, you, you really lose them really quick. And it is almost impossible to, to catch it up without either sacrificing lines or your angle. I guess a little bit of both though. But here you can see a little bit of slow up. That's that spot that I kind of talked about earlier where you got to really think about your lines and then how that's going to affect things. So it's a very, it's a pretty fun track. I definitely would suggest it if you haven't driven in. The pits are a little weird, but it's still a pretty fun one. Uh, now, of course, tried and true. We're on the clutch kickers track. Now, I wanted to showcase this also a little bit longer. Now, I was following Turbo on a couple of runs and by a couple, I mean quite a few. Now, I've come to realize the previous thought process that I had on this track, I think was a little bit incorrect. So I wanted to take some time and, and talk about it here. So here right now, 
We're just trying to maintain proximity with 40k in front of us. Really just trying to stay. We want to try to match that, uh, that, a uh, initiation timing. I was a little bit off, actually. And then here, look at this. Turbo takes this middle line. So I was saying before, and you can kind of see it there, that I was aiming for that black inside strip of the track. I now wholeheartedly disagree with that statement. And I realized when you take that corner, as I mentioned, I think we were talking about Mihan, where one corner sets you up for the next corner that sets you up for the next corner, right? With this track, if you take that line incorrectly, I realized why I was struggling and saying, hey, I'm not sure if I'm you know, supposed to clutch here or if I'm supposed to e-brake here. But when you take this line, this middle line, a little bit wider than I did there, it actually sets you up really well for that corner. So what is that corner through two? one two yeah maybe maybe three if you say the initiation corner but you'll see i think we have one more lap here that also i wanted to call out i do think turbo was taking a little bit of a modified line and i've mentioned where i've said hey like i'm in the middle of the track i kind of refer to it as a shock absorber but here you can see turbo taking a little slightly modified line and that line actually helping out the train and even me you could see in position four being able to take a much better line that set me up really well for the the uh, third corner there. So I know that's like a, a lot of clutch kicker all right there. I just kind of wanted to make sure you guys saw that and I gave some commentary, especially as I've mentioned before, I'm learning, I'm still trying to improve. There's gonna be things that I might think one weekend or you know maybe one month even. And then as I've driven with other people, started to really try to analyze and do that active chase that i talked about in our previous video too so here we are on villain sportsland again turbo is in the lead now i was gonna say i mean i feel like this was basically a turbo training weekend for me anytime that i see him uh, especially with tracks that i don't know or really if tracks that i do know i do try to give a couple laps if if i can if there's not people already following him to just kind of compare and contrast and see how i feel i think someone stated uh, Turbo has, I, I want to say, like 10,000 hours or something. Absolutely insane. So being able to follow him, especially on one of his team's hometown tracks, which is Villain Sportsland. So here, just trying to keep up, I think, and I'm not sure if it's in this uh, video with the edits that I did, but this man was taking these crazy, really committed, uh, almost like backy entries, which... I was trying my hardest to match. I mean, I, I, I'm saying that I try to follow him, man, but I will definitely also say I feel like when I do, I'm basically following the final boss of a set of course if there was one. I'm actually almost not kidding about that, but yeah, here just trying to really copy and mimic what he's doing. So you'll see there I'm losing a little bit, a little bit of that proximity, but I'm still just trying to fill out his lines and understand his kind of groove and his... Um, his thought process on how he takes some of these and you'll see like he took a different line i modified his typically if there's a driver that knows a track really well you're not going to really want to do that you're going to want to follow what they're doing uh but it's always good to kind of experiment even if it's a track that you feel pretty comfortable in it's good to just remind yourself like hey this is where i should aim or this is what i should do different and kind of gives you a a renewed perspective to make sure that there's not maybe something better that you're missing so here we're following Turbo and then, of course, our friend Mods from OTM. So Mods looks like he's taking the line that I typically take. And you can see Turbo taking that corner. Uh, I don't even know what corner that is, but the two corners back a little bit different, too. So just trying to, again, stay close on proximity. Try to initiate where they do. I think I'm going to be a little bit late. A little, actually, that looked kind of on time. You can see these guys are really going close to that outside wall and then they're also following that white outer line or let's just say the outside zone of that initiation corner pretty heavy i found a lot of times where i'm a little bit too uh too shallow on that i think it's just because of a little bit of nervousness on that track but i'm getting there i think i'm getting a little bit better so now we find ourselves on a track that maybe not everyone has seen before this is actually OTM mid pond 
This is a pretty cool track. I think what OTM has told me before is that they did try to create a lot of these less known uh, grassroots style tracks. And this is actually one of them. This is a IRL track. I totally forget where it's located, but it's, it's crazy interesting. It is a tough but rewarding track, I would say. I am still very green at this track. And actually, I, have, I haven't driven it in so long. I went to go try to lock in my S15. Someone else took it. No big deal. We are now in the TBZ. I'm trying my best. It's a lot different of a car. And, and I also kind of like thought to myself too, you know, this was an opportunity for me to drive something that I haven't for a while to see really if I like how the S15 is still driving. If I don't, just kind of, again, to gain a different renewed perspective. And really this car, a lot different and really gave me insight onto how the S15 was set up. I think I was running positive uh, one degree of camber in the rear. I think it's at about a 50 toe. So a very aggressive grippy car where the TBZ is a lot, maybe not a lot more, but definitely a little bit more flowy than that car. Different engine in there as well, as you can probably hear in the back. So it was a really unique experience for me to, you know, suck it up, I guess I would say, and drive a car that I'm not normally always insta-locking into. So this corner, I still haven't really figured out. I think that line that was taken is pretty pretty decent by Scooby. Then you kind of take this outside. I think you want to e-brake. I'm, again, not sure. Uh, you can see me making the, a major mistake. This, you kind of want to run an outside. I think Scooby went a little bit out, which I've done countless times. And then from here, you want to go very, like push the track limits outside, push the track limits outside, set you up pretty good if you get your rear tires on that white rumble strip in the back. And then I think this is kind of midline to mid slash like inside line here. I, I think you can take it a little different. I've been really thinking about line choices and how trains can follow. I've been a big advocate of talking about accordioning where there are some corners that you should take different if you have a lot of people behind you i'm starting to to adjust a little bit and see like how true that is because it it almost seems like if the drivers that you're driving with are expecting those corners or expecting those wide angles there's not that accordion issue and when accordions happen i guess that's just what i'm calling them but when accordions happen it seems like someone isn't ready for that outside line they're trying to hold proximity and maintain that proximity and then so they're taking a little bit more shallow of an angle that then just ends up hurting them really poor like it just really hurts in general and then you end up bunching i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm still not convinced but that's just kind of what i'm thinking so so for our final track on friday we find ourselves back at takamaki still really like this track it's still a really fun track i like the bumpiness i like the i guess lack of better word realism on this track here we have turbo in front Unlimited behind, fresh behind him and me in the fourth position. Uh, maybe as far as like the line choices here, this is definitely still a track where I feel like I generally understand where I should go, but I'm still not 100% all the time. And, and kind of let me explain that to you. So here we're going to find ourselves on the entry point, right? So you'd be coming out of the pits into here. So I think most people take this line, like if you look at turbo up in front, pretty good pretty pretty standard outside go all the way out try to get to those cones without hitting the concrete barrier gear transition i think that was just a little bit of maybe lag i'm not sure then here go all the way to the outside zone on the orange cones and then here you want to kind of touch your rear tires if you can to the rumble strip now that uphill is pretty hard you don't want to left foot brake you really want to trust the car and the momentum of the car and then the grip that your car is going to give especially with these uh, swarm cars, they're going to grip up and help you. Whereas a lot of other cars might just slide sideways and, and you have to use those other tools. Like I mentioned, either left foot braking or I guess clutching in, but not, not really. So let's try it again. This is actually a different run here for behind OTM reg with the other two in front. And of course, turbo on the lead go a little bit shallow here, but we're trying to hold that proximity if we can transition that corner is very similar to the clutch kickers where i'm still trying to figure it out outside of the orange outside to the rumble strips here you kind of run that rumble strip at the beginning on the inside a little bit and then you kind of let the car uh draft out into the outside corner 
here again I, I, I'm not totally sure about these lines I was taking a lot of mid lines before I think you can go a little bit more outside versus inside and then here too it, it will cut really heavy if you're not careful so I think for the most part I try to go mid line in that section I'm not totally sure. We'll, we'll watch it back and, and see what line. And it is a little bit different, right? Because I'm on a chase, I want to maintain proximity. Uh, I don't want to take super shallow lines. They're hitting uh, Reg and him recovering pretty easily, but trying to stay close to him, trying to have a consistent line, but not going too shallow. But I can't really dictate my own line. As we've talked about, if you do, then you end up losing the people in front of you, right? So I'm trying to just follow this line. There seems to be a little bit of a... Uh, static happening in front of me so maybe a little bit more proximity than i should give but uh yeah just trying to stick in so here is our first track which is shadow valley now i want to mention this this is actually a really cool change so we've been doing a couple votes on different server features and things that we want to change one of those votes was actually something that we enabled previously uh, and then I think for performance issues, or I'm not really necessarily sure, I think we we're still messing with the optimization. We ended up turning it off, but we actually now have 24 hour weather cycles, day night cycles, I should say, probably is a better way to put that. So I believe it's every, yeah, every hour, because <laughs> we spent a quite a bit of time talking about the way the multiplication goes for uh, time versus anyways I'm not gonna get into it no one cares but all that matters is now we have a day night cycle set every hour and we also when I'm not streaming and we don't do a manual track rotation every hour the server naturally will rotate every six hours so thought it'd be kind of nice you have a little bit you know not too much night not too much day I think most people prefer the day but really like I can't stress enough how m much more immersive uh, the game is, has felt. I know it sounds so silly, and and maybe it is, man, but <clears throat> I don't know, man. There's just something really engaging about having these cycles. And you can see that skyline, especially on Shadow Valley, the mountains and the trees look so nice. I actually had this whole section for Shadow Valley. I know it's not the most crazy driving or anything insane, but I just really wanted to showcase what like a sunset looks like and you'll see this i think throughout some of these edits here where it's like oh that's weird that switched to a day oh that switched to a night we'll kind of see that here and there the other thing that i did uh shout out to foul actually we were talking about the filters and i think i was using stock pure i'm now running oh man i should have remembered but it's a realism filter and hopefully i would love to hear some feedback on what you guys think about it I think it's really cool. I think that maybe some of the cars a little bit glossier than um, I would imagine, but I'm not sure if that's drift car. If that's just like my perspective with drift cars or real, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that makes sense. But here you can see, I mean, look how dark it gets. Definitely a lot of tracks do have lighting integrated. Uh, I think this one does, but it's only in certain spots. So you can see how insanely dark it gets but what's really fun i definitely really fun to me is during the night cycles if you have a big train uh i mean it's pretty easy to see uh, other than maybe the lead who's kind of having to guess a little bit especially this outside zone here there's no lighting so i guess it is <clears throat> i guess it is a little fitting right it's shadow valley after all <clears throat> but yeah i think we should be switching now to a bigger train during the night so you can kind of see what i'm talking about can still see the sun setting a little bit there and here we are with a bunch of people i think two people behind me i'm on a catch up i think they started before i did i was just trying to join and jump on this train so i spent most of this lap catching up to them and then here we are on the catch up i think the rest of the train is here so as it seems most of the time especially this video turbo is in the lead regs behind him I'm just trying to get into that groove. And I think maybe I can mention here, I think a lot of people try to rush into getting on the doors or like, oh man, there's these two people killing it. Like, I just want to get right it, right up in there, right? But I try to get into a spot where I feel like I'm in that rhythm that they kind of have built. And then I'm just tacking on to it. Once you kind of get that rhythm set, it's pretty easy to chase. But especially at the beginning, you probably saw a little bit of, uh, a little bit of back and forth before I felt 
a lot more confident in what they were doing. And even here, you can kind of see a little bit of proximity, but not bad here on a five-person train. Looks pretty clean. OTM reg and turbo looking clean as well, as always. And that spot right there is really fun for that transition. There's a lot of different ways to take it. I definitely wouldn't suggest e-braking. I used to try it before. But now we have Lime Rock. So I think this was where I did even more adjustments to the pure filter or the filter that I'm using now. And in addition, this Saturday, uh, I wanted to start with a car that I knew. Thankfully, uh, and actually let me back up for one second. So every month we're going to be rotating cars and running polls on our Discord to see what cars we want for the month, uh, which are in the swarm pack. So if you're interested in joining that, if there's cars that you want to see, uh, especially we want to drive cars that maybe we haven't driven a lot, you have a lot of different options. There's 22 unique cars in the swarm pack, so there's so many to choose. Uh, obviously, we I think we kept both of the S13s. We added the E46. Somehow the S15 made it. Uh, but it gives a lot more opportunity to learn a lot of different cars that really aren't driven. And you'll see them here throughout the uh, this video. I think, you know, the big one I would say off the top of my head is the C5. But here I'm in the E46. I think it's Max's E46. Now, I wanted to mention this car feels night and day different from the S15. So the S15, really, I was having to clutch all the time. It was basically... I would argue like mostly throttle with a little bit of clutch control to stop the bogging. But here, it kind of opened my eyes, man. I do think that this, uh, you could see <laughs> the cut right when someone is cutting their fries crazy. But you can see like if you look at the pedal cam or sorry, the pedal, well, I guess the pedal cam or the pedal meters at the bottom right or at the top right, a lot more throttle control. And this reminded me you know, I haven't driven IRL for, for quite a few years. I think it's been three, four, maybe five. I hope it's not that long, but like it really reminded me of what my little E36 felt like and, and how it was to drive. And and I think this is actually a lot more realistic than how the, the S15 drove. I don't really necessarily know. I, I, I guess like I haven't really talked to any of the Swarm guys, but I was kind of thinking to myself, I wonder if the left-hand drive cars were not as meticulously, uh, like they didn't have a comparison one-to-one -one of their IRL cars, right? All the Swarm cars in the actual Swarm pack, not including the left-hand drive ones, are modeled and um, really based off of the team members. So I think that they probably took a lot of time, drove it on a Seto, they know how it drives in real life, maybe even got in, got in there, kind of compared contrasted. But for these left-hand drive cars, I don't think that they have a direct correlation with a Swarm member. So they don't have that um a way to measure and gauge how that feels if that makes sense that's just how that's just how i'm kind of seeing it and if that's true i think that the e46 is actually one of my favorite cars right now it was this whole this last weekend was so fun i i, I can't even stress that enough uh here i think we've seen this one time we're actually on Segoya park so as i've explained before very wide sweeping corners Kind of a fast track you want to aim for these zones that are marked on the track will help you set up really well and this track can feel really nice or it can feel really bad and i think most of the time uh it really comes down to a how how the tune is or more specifically your gear ratio and then b just trying to set up for your line so let's talk about it after here uh we'll talk about these line choices once we get to that early spot. So here at making a big mistake, I think I even might have ended up knocking someone up. Wow. Excuse me. Knocking someone out of the train. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, okay. So let's talk about this. Entering right when Turbo does are trying to a little bit shallow going outside if I can, but trying to follow what his line is going to be. I'm not totally sure. I haven't driven with him a ton on this track, but going on the outside here, Turbo does a great job outside zone. Just a little initiation. Now, some people go out pretty wide. I think I messed up and had to pull a little bit of throttle out. But there's this weird, like, almost middle to outside that the track naturally pushes you to. And then here, outside zone. You want to go mid here to set you up really well for this outside zone here. Then follow this inside zone. Like, I guess, what is that? Touch and go. And then uh, rotate here all the way on the outside zone. And then mid to outer. Here we're going to our nighttime. 
think I wanted to showcase some of the different uh, time. And it, it feels different, man. It definitely feels different on the uh, time of day, right? Like nighttime sometimes feels a little bit more sweaty. But here I'm following in third. Uh, I think OTM Professor just hopped on the C5. I want to say he, he's just kind of figuring it out, seeing how it's feeling. Found the lead with the E46 as well. Taking this mid side, mid line, trying to stay in that proximity, going out to the outside zone, a little bit shallow, trying to match the transition timing. I wasn't totally sure and confident, so I was trying to give a little bit of proximity, but also this is a first, I've driven every Swarm uh, car, but I haven't driven them extensively. So this was what, hour two of the uh, E46. So I was trying to be a little bit more reserved and just give a little bit of proximity. I wasn't really trusting my lines super well. So you can probably tell my transition timings were all, not all, but most of the time they're late. A lot of proximity got built. Even like maybe not the best lines. I'm not really copycatting the lines perfectly, but yeah, here you can see outside zone again, Paul doing a good job of doing the lines just kind of like Turbo did, as I mentioned, a little bit wider there, but you can see how well it set him out for this outside zone. I think it doesn't get all the way out, but sets up, sets up for this outside zone. I'm a little shallow there myself. Mid to outside zone here. Aim for this inside zone right there. Get your front tires on that. Transition, and then if you transition, you should be able to go outside. You could even go a little bit more wide than what you just saw there. So that's a fun track. Like, I think I've said this before. I think I said this about a lot of tracks that we drive, but like, that's a really fun track to just warm up, especially for, for big tandems or, or trains. So now we find ourselves back on UK streets. I'm hoping I only put in two runs because these runs are pretty long, but we have fresh here in the lead. Again, I'm trying to fill it out. Uh, the E46, see how it drives. It's a lot different. There's a lot of... Uh, it's really hard, I will say, trying to go from a car that you know really well to a car that you haven't driven to not apply the same techniques, almost as muscle memory, to the same situation. So there's a lot of areas where I'd be clutch kicking, maybe even e-braking a little bit, but this car seems like it's a lot more interested in the throttle control, which is nice. I, I think that's probably how it should be. So they're making a little bit more... A couple mistakes. Stand to fresh store here. I don't think I've driven with them a ton, but I mean, I, I hope the graphics, I mean, they, they do look really nice. Like I said, a little bit, maybe too shiny, but this is one of the uh, day sessions, day cycles in our run that I was able to get it on video. I think there was a night session, but it didn't, it wasn't like a super spectacular run. I was still learning a couple things and they're making a pretty decent mistake, messing up everyone behind me. You can see someone having to reset kind of rough kind of rough that I would uh, mess up the train like that. But like I said, if you are if you feel like you mess up, you should not be like me and you should try to just reset. So here, UK Streets is really interesting. This corner will sneak up on you. It feels like it's going to be really wide and then it kind of tightens up near the end. So you want to go maybe a little bit mid or mid outside zone and then be ready for that really... It's It doesn't look like a really hard corner or a sharp corner but it, it definitely it, it's surprising especially depending on how you're you're entering here so me again just trying to stay close to fresh figuring out the car a little bit a little bit of left foot brake there trying to keep the momentum with this car trying to stay away from the e-brake as much as i can it does seem to uh take the e-brake if i want to apply it but it doesn't seem smooth to the people behind me at least that's how it felt you know when you're in a in a tandem or a train you pull the e-brake or you make a mistake and you get a couple taps, you know, the guy behind you, the guy behind him saying, hey, that line was not great, dude. That's kind of how it feels when I pull the e-brake on the E46. So maybe uh, the next time, next couple times, I'll feel a little bit more confident with this car. I think near the end, though, of this video, there's some pretty crazy runs. I was feeling a lot more confident as the day went on, especially this area, too. I felt like I had to really stretch the S15 onto that long corner, but on the E46 it felt really decent and it was more about the throttle control that I had to focus on. Yeah, UK streets is always super fun, especially when you have so many so many friends. It's kind of like you're street sharking actually. I've never done that, for the record. But, uh, yeah. Feels very similar. 
All right, so now I don't think this is a track that is showcased or has been showcased ever on our weekend recaps. This is Euphoria Hillside. Now, this was probably, I want to say around 30 minutes onto this track. I was, I think I started around fourth position. Somehow I ended up here in second position. I will say this is probably one of the hardest times I've driven so far, which was awesome. I felt like I've, like, I, I don't know if it's the car. I don't know if it's the graphics. I don't know if it's the time change, but all of it felt like it's starting to come together. And I was just feeling for lack of a better word, like a little bit more locked in. And I was really trying to focus on how close I can stay to turbo and matching his initiation timing. So you'll see like there are some mistakes here and there, but I was really trying to stay with him. And it seemed like you'll see like if there's any ever a mistake that I make where like if I even left foot a little bit, if I even e-braked in a certain spot, I felt like this man was absolutely gone pulling like train lengths ahead of me. Hopefully there's a couple clips, but it, it was crazy trying to follow turbo here. I mean, I, Shout out to him. He took this track crazy. And I think I developed a little bit better on my corners because of him. But here, just trying to stay close to him. And uh, we'll talk about on this next run, we'll kind of walk through uh, what my thoughts are and what my lines that I'm looking for are too. Because because uh, again, like they've actually changed a little bit with the car. But there's some lines I feel a little bit more confident about and some lines that the car handles a little differently than I may be used to. But overall, like it's not to restate it again but like this car has been really really fun to drive i think a lot of the the swarm cars that i'd like to try to give a little bit more time to but me coming from drifting a bmw you know i gotta stay with the bmw i guess but i also love how it sounds too i think they did a great job on the sound all right so let's talk about the line so here to our right that's going to be where your pits are here you're going to initiate Kind of throw a big wide line here. You want to stay on the throttle, run the outside line. Then this section, I guess that you could call it a chicane. A little bit of just a back and forth. You're not really committing into any hard angle. You can see I was late on that transition. Turbo immediately started pulling away from me. Here you can take this inside, middle, or I think outside. But at the end, you want to pull into the inside corner to inside corner to outside. Here you can see we're running the outside. Then you want to pull inside corner here and then transition. This I was struggling on a little bit. I wasn't still confident. Like I wasn't really sure how to take it. That, that's actually been a, a hard corner that I've been trying to learn a little bit more. Uh, here outside line, you're going to run the outside, then outside again. And then I think you want to go more like mid to outer or mid. What is a turbo running? Yeah, like a mid to outside. And then here you want to stay outside as much as you can, in my opinion, from what I've driven. Pull it in a little bit onto mid. Then you can go on a little bit of an outside line here. You can see my car wavering a little bit. And then uh, a lot of this is more like mid fast lines, I would say. I'm just trying to think like, is that actually true? I think for the most part that is accurate. And then here you kind of want to trust the car, throw it in. You're going to go uphill, right? You want to carry a lot of, as much as of that momentum as you can. I've seen myself shallow in a little bit onto the midline. It looked like turbo took outside, went back to mid. And then here, you don't want to go outside. You're going to see if you go too outside, you're going to lose some of that momentum again. Uh, you want to go, I think a little bit more mid here. You can go outside. And then I typically go inside midline. He was taking more of this outside line, which I think worked okay. And then typically for me, I go inside and stretch out that uh, that drift up to the canyon. Turbo seems to be taking a little bit different. And so far, I mean, when I've been uh, contesting Turbo's lines, I've been ultimately wrong. So <laughs> he probably has better lines than me. But yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Maybe we'll uh, drive that again. It is more of a uh, tug ish map. So you got to think a lot about that momentum. But now we actually go to a map suggested by OTM Mods. This is TS Takata Circuit. I've never seen it. I've never driven on it. Also, I don't know why these tracks are all snow. I I guess that's a setting somewhere. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, this was actually an extreme struggle for me. I This is the first time on this track. Seems like the OTM boys love their big uh, straight initiation style tracks and also the more technical ones. 
there was a couple points where i felt like i was getting it but i think it was that initial corner that i struggled and then this car like i noticed when i started to get a little i don't want to say panic but like i guess maybe that's like the best word i'm not sure i kind of fall uh just fell back into my old habits which this car does not want those clutch kicks the clutch kicks are not helpful in the c46 and every time you know maybe overwhelmed is a better word like feeling a little bit overwhelmed just trying to get the car to drift when i did those actions that worked in the s15 they did not translate to the e46 so i was working really hard to try to keep as much proximity as i could you can see turbo's already pulling away from me and then even though i wasn't staying super close in that proximity this was an opportunity for me to actually learn the lines so shout out to turbo for basically uh training me it feels like throughout this whole entire weekend i i actually do feel genuinely thankful and that i've learned a lot here so he's initiating at those corners he's taking this the inside outside i've also seen him go outside all the way and then here kind of that midline then they go outside of the track onto an inside I have seen an outside to run full outside, but I think the outside to inside is a little bit better. Uh, and then here, I mean, it's almost hard to kind of tell you what the line should be because I genuinely don't feel confident about it. I would say, if you're curious what the line should be, just watch this Corvette in front of me because <laughs> yeah, he was hitting them no problem, man. And you can see like how much I was struggling, but I, I did think it was important to showcase like, you know, I'm not a perfect driver and, and I never would pretend or say that I am. I, I think I'm very, very far off from that i still have so much to learn and i'm always constantly learning but i did want to kind of showcase like what it really looks like um to try to learn a track at least for me and like everyone's gonna be different every skill level is different but i just wanted to show like it's not like you can plug into a track maybe some people can i, I i'm sure some people can but for me like it, it does take a little bit of time and i think we drove this track for about an hour or so i would say like i probably feel like 50 percent confident even after an hour some of these corners like i did feel better about but as i mentioned going all the way back to when we were on our mihan track each corner sets you up for the next corner so you really do have to think about how does this corner and me on the entry and the exit of the corner set me up for the entry and the exit of the next corner maybe more like entry to exit but i just think a little bit more holistically about it at least that's how my mind works uh for these corners but i did want to include this part too this was, we were, I think, like full noon day cycle there. We're now more of like afternoon sun setting. It looks so nice. I mean, even watching it back, it looks nice, but definitely driving, it's, I don't know. Maybe I'm glazing this this uh, day night cycle a little bit too much, but I did enjoy it. So here we're following mods. Uh, I think the person in front ends up resetting or something like that. His entry was a little bit different. You can see Turbo was initiating at the cones i think mods is a little bit later and then you can see here he goes more of this mid slash outside line runs out all the way on the outside initiates in the same spot that turbo did and it does look about the same line for that corner there that outside to maybe arguably inside and then this line looks pretty much the same and then this a little bit of an extension manji the back to it i feel like you could probably extend it that corner is also deceptively weird man it it definitely feels big and then it ends up uh cutting down on you a little bit so now we find ourselves at bhs drift playground this track is still one of my i don't i wouldn't say top tracks but i do really enjoy this track it was actually really cool to see and, and a lot of these tracks actually to see the day night cycles it's not something you really see from these public servers much and i totally get it i think people struggle with the nighttime but it's really cool because some of these tracks if not most of them i think lime rock is the exception sometimes I, i'm not sure what was happening but it was really really dark but most of these have built-in lighting systems and a track like this for sure i mean you can see those light poles and i hope and i think you're actually going to see a little bit of nighttime action here but here we're following unlimited just trying to stay consistent again like for me, this weekend was really just plugging in, enjoying, you know, having fun as it always is, of course. But really, I was just trying to fill out the E46 and actively, I had to actively think about not doing the same actions as the S15. Like it's very easy to jump into a new car 
and I'm saying this personally, I mean, at least for me, I think for probably a lot of people, it's really easy to jump into a car, into a car that you haven't driven before, and be like, oh, okay, like, I know how to take this corner, or like, you'll have like your specific mannerisms, if that's even like, if that makes sense. But those techniques, maybe is a better way to put that. You have your different techniques on how to take these corners or entries or, or you know, anything along those lines. But when you jump into a new car, like really forcing your brain to say, no, like I'm not just going to do what I'm physically used to doing. And, and especially like for me, I think if I've drifted 20 hours every weekend and there's like four, let's just say four weekends, that's like a hundred hours that I've now dedicated to arguably muscle memory, right? So if you're in those similar situations, like I'd really, really recommend trying to fight that autopilot driving. I, I wouldn't even call it that. I would just say like being receptive and willing to say like everything I learned to this point and how I've approached these different corners or how I've been chasing or how I've been leading may be different and I'm going to adapt to the car or you can adapt and make the car work for, for what you're doing. I'm not that good yet. I would say I have to adapt to the car and kind of make it work. But the E46 has been really fun, uh, for sure. But here we're just on a nighttime chase with turbo and mods. Really behind on these transitions. It's also hard too, like with all these graphic changes, I found myself a couple times just kind of like almost just enjoying the enjoying the the scenery, you know. Just like, oh, this is pretty nice. Dude, that looks crazy, man. Like, look at how those lights are looking. Like, how does this track look at night? It's a little hard to fight that. I won't lie, but it was really fun. But yeah, I'm sorry. Not too much, like, commentary on the track. I think we've talked about it a little bit before. I think most of this video's focus really wanted to showcase the uh, day-night cycles, the graphic change, uh, get some feedback from you guys, and also talk about really the biggest change for me, which was the E46. So here's another track that is not seen all that much, if ever, I think, which is called DCR Training Day. And this specific one is the V2 version. I'm not sure. I'm sure that there's a V1. I, have, I haven't seen it. Maybe I've seen it one time on Vossen or, or something like that. But this track is really like, I would definitely, definitely recommend if you are struggling with wide sweeping uh, corners or, you know, wide sweeping corners plus like proximity to walls or knowing like where the rear of your car is. This is a very good track to just practice. Like I would even say like if you're trying to learn your transition timings or your proximity, like this track takes out a lot of the complexity of other tracks. And I know people like OTM mods, <laughs> if you're listening, dude, I'm talking to you. Okay. I know that for a lot of people who are like OGs or like experienced intermediate advanced drivers, this track is going to feel very tame. Uh, you know, I guess that's all I can say. Like, it's going to feel kind of boring. I think you can make it interesting. If I were to drive this track myself, I think that could maybe get a little bit tedious and kind of like repetitive. But at the same time, like I'm really even here as we're watching, like I am trying to focus on that proximity. I'm actually losing proximity here. I'm trying to help. Uh, make sure that I'm on these outside zones when I can. I'm kind of modifying a couple of these areas to see how I feel about it. So like, even though it is a simple track, I'm not, I'm not the greatest driver. I'm not even a, a great driver, but like for me, there's still a lot to learn here too. And if I was able to just stay right on his door, like I'd be like, yeah, man, this track is pretty boring. Like, you know, on to the next, and I, I never want to drive this track again, you know, but this track, I still feel like, uh, I, I need to improve on. So hopefully I have another clip of this track because I do need to talk to you guys about the line. And I've been trying, and, and this is the reason why this video was a little longer, is I wanted to give a lot of footage or a lot of extra video to these tracks that you guys haven't seen. So like Euphoria Hillside was maybe a unique example because it's such a long track, but I did want to kind of incorporate that a little bit. And this is a very simple, like I said, we're taking off all of the all the complexity you can focus on one specific thing i think that if you look at the this track like that it, it's going to change your perspective on this track right so here we're going to see this entry okay perfect so this is where you're going to start right basically pretty simple you're going to run a outside here all the way outside 
You're going to go pull in a little bit, transition to the second outside zone. That fence will catch you if you're sleeping. That will catch you and, and pull the back of your car out. Outside zone again, no problem. Want to try to hold that outside zone. If you're having struggles, track your gear ratio. Again, another fence, another place to crash, but try to run that outside zone here. There, I feel like you take a little bit more of a midline into this very long sweeper next to these concrete barriers. And then here, you want to go outside. You could even go a little bit more outside than that. You could even, you know, mix it up and, and test some different lines, right? As I mentioned, this track takes a lot of those extra complexities, so you can focus on different things. One thing you can focus on is, hey, like, I remember, or not, I don't want to give myself credit. But it's like, you know, maybe you watch this video and you're like, okay, like he did mention these lines. Like, I am curious. I haven't really thought about how one corner sets me up for the next corner. This would be a great track to really test that out. Like how you take your lines and how you're having to fight or battle the car to get it to, to go where you want it to go. Again, simple track, but it allows you to focus on one very specific thing, right? So here I typically go a little bit more inside and then a later entry on that zone. But I haven't driven this track a ton either. I think I have a decent amount of time, but not that much. So I, I personally would love to go back to this track, especially with a ton of people and, uh, and just kind of practice a little bit more lines. Now we find ourselves on our final track, which is Ebisu North Course. This was crazy, bro. If you've never driven this track at night, like I, I think there's something weird with the, the light cycles. Cause like early morning, like we're saying like midnight to like 3 a.m. basically. This track, like the lights don't even turn on on the track. So your entry here, uh, I don't know if I included it in here, but your entry, so you go up this big hill, dude, it's just, you're just throwing it into blackness. Like here, right here, we're behind fresh and, uh, and mods initiate. And then right here, you're basically seeing black, like nothing. The only thing you can see is this little light that's on the inside uh, inside zone or inside corner there. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty gnarly. It's pretty fun, though. It's pretty fun. It's pretty challenging. I think it's fun. I think a lot of people didn't like it, though, dude. If I'm being honest with you guys. But here, here it was really cool, actually. This session was very, very long, or at least it felt long. It was just me, mods, and fresh going back and forth. They had this really cool cadence that maybe arguably I probably should have been more of a part of, but they were going, you know, one person leads, one person chases, and then me in the back, one person leads, one person chases, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And that was a really consistent groove that really helped me like get a little bit more confident with this track. Now, one thing I've been doing is trying to enter uh, or start the initiation at the top of the crest of the hill. I've seen a lot of people take it a little bit different. I still have not driven this track enough to tell you exactly what it should be but uh yeah i'm still learning it like everyone else and i think everyone has their own take on it too so if you could believe it man if you could believe it we're getting right to the end of the video i think we have like one more run if you made it this far dude shout out to you man thank you for hanging out this recording session especially as i'm watching it back with you guys and and talking over it it just went insanely it just went out like i I wouldn't even know that we were at the end unless I was looking at the timeline here. But sincerely, thank you all so much for your support on this series. I really hope this was enjoyable. If you have any feedback, especially on the graphics or anything like that, the pace, let me know. I want to keep making this entertaining and fun. Hopefully you guys had fun. Uh, other than that, guys, thank you for being here. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, peace.